we had the we had the Ides sale this past uh, couple of weeks, man, and I found a bunch of Jim Lee Alpha Flights uh, for forty cents. We're gonna crack these open and take a look at at, at the growth spurt. My name's Ed Piscor. I'm Jim Rugg. My name's Tom Scholey. Special guest in the house. Tom, what do you have up front? I got Jack Kirby, The Epic Life of the King of Comics, the story of Jack Kirby's life, uh, every everybody he ever met, every comic he ever made, uh, all, all in one uh, nice handy volume. Uh, I got uh, Fantastic Four Grand Design, and I, I have a Patreon where I, I post comics as I make them. Just go to patreon.com, search Tom Scholey. Jimmy, what do you have? I have Street Angel, Deadly Girl Alive. From Image Comics, you can get this wherever you buy comics or books online or in brick-and-mortar comic shops. You can join me on patreon.com slash jimrug where you can download my out-of-print zines and hard-to-find mini-comics. You can see a lot of my original art. You can see how I made Street Angel Deadliest Girl Alive and a whole lot more on patreon.com slash jimrug. Red Room Comics are in the wild, man. First issue on the sands as of this recording. Uh, get it while it's hot. Going into reprints pretty soon. Uh, it's going to be coming out pretty reliably every four weeks. Uh, so get it put on your pull list. Get your pre-orders reserved through Fantagraphics. You can do that through the link tree in the description below this video. If you want to read the comics before they hit print, uh, join my Patreon. Patreon.com slash Ed 100 pages up there uh, as we speak. Uh, new strips every Tuesday. So the great I'd sell was going on. As of our recording uh, last Thursday, we, we lost Mr. I'd on, on that, that fateful day. And every time I go down to uh, the store... Uh, for this sale, you know, word goes up. He lives above the store, I think. Word trickles up to him that Ed's there, and he comes down in his elevator, and harass it would harass me. <laughs> oh, you, Roast. You, you only come. You only come to my store. You're a vulture. You only come to the store to, to pick the bones when we have the sale. Yada yada. <laughs> and I was looking forward to that. You know, this this pastime because you just uh, ignore that part. Say hi, Mister Ed. How you doing? And then the defensive wall comes down, and it becomes a, norm a normal guy. We lost him, and that's a tragedy for Pittsburgh comics and all, all that sort of stuff. Uh, but while I was down there this last time, found a vein of these Jim Lee Alpha Flights that I never looked at before. Barely cracked them open. Cracked them open just enough to see Jim Lee pencils on all of mm. these, and I thought, like, let's, let's see the trajectory, man. We got about six, seven months' worth of comics here. Let's, let's chart the growth. Man, I love Jim Lee on newsprint. Yes. Yeah, all of those fine lines, they, they sort of, uh, you know, we talk about coloring on newsprint a lot. I feel like some of the inking and drawing methods have their own quality on newsprint. That, that little bit of bleed, you, you can create sort of grays and values with the crosshatching that a little bit harder as you get into, or different marks necessary as you get into better paper stocks. Yeah, and you can see I'm starting to try to f figure that kind of stuff out. This is definitely the era... The Spiegelman era where he talks about, you know, a comic isn't finished till you see it on the printed page. Specifically for those reasons, man, you got to start to figure out uh, how far apart that hatching has to be. And maybe all that uh, all that harassment we give Scott Williams and uh, Jim Lee with those far uh, hatch, hatch marks, maybe you needed those on uh, this, this Yeah, it just like turns into newsprint. black on, on there. Right. It's so interesting to see glimpses of Jim Lee, like in his figure work or in a dynamic panel layout. And then it'll disappear back into almost like a house style, that Marvel house style that I don't know. Everybody that came through Marvel, you know, probably had in the early in their early pages. It's a pretty cool imagination in here, kind of cybernetic brain. That's pretty dope. Part of my uh, part of my crying heroes zine. <laughs> <laughs> all right, man. The covers on these are all pretty striking. Terry Austin on the inks. This feels very much like uh, like a Herb Trimpey kind of t uh, toy tie-in, yes. you know, like a kid in all ages, a younger version of comics. You know? <laughs> this thing opens up the same way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wonder it's if there's like a different reprint. shot of the, of the ship. <laughs> this this almost looks like the same comic. <laughs> <It's hilarious. laughs> At what point did Sasquatch turn white? It's a good question. I'd be very confused with uh, Wendigo if he's not careful. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I have to admit, I'm not, uh, I haven't kept up on my Alpha Flight history, <laughs> my Alpha Flight canon. <laughs> a lot of interesting guys came through there after after John Byrne left. Some color hold stuff they're, they're applying there. You wonder, uh, that can't, Jim Lee can't have any influence on that, right? I, yeah, I have no idea, man. You even see some here, you know, with some magentas. Mm -hmm. 
wonder Look who's at making this. that choice. Is a colorist making that choice? Check this out, man. There's like overprinting on the black. Zappy lines. Yeah, that's unusual. Very weird. Almost a misprint. That's so strange. Yeah, because you see like the, the color lettering. hold with these lightning bolts and stuff. Yeah, it's going it's over bizarre. the lettering. Yeah, weird. Again, probably not a Jim Lee uh, decision at that, at that stage of his career. Well, if that's too, way too many panels for a Jim Lee page. He was always good at drawing those ships and stuff, though. Oh, there's some good stuff coming up. All right, cool. Check this out. Wow. Dig that. Oh, dude, so so it's a magenta and cyan plate that, that image is on there to get you that dark purple. That's rare. I don't know about... Uh seeing that done before mm -mm. color holds like that no i like the line art though like for her face and stuff that's a pretty interesting technique and one that i would credit jim lee with you know i think that's coming from the penciler for sure you know what it is man a lot of mid shots you know a lot of straight up and down middle shots we're seeing it's that like marvel editorial of, of the jim the shooter stuff. yeah the jim shooter edicts i think that's also uh a thing wow. that young cartoonists do it's like inherent that mid shot yeah. you know you're almost over explaining everything all the time this is pretty sick yeah this this is getting closer to like prime time jim lee yeah that looked really good that's a fun cover yeah revert like reverse uh half of it milgram on inks how about that i swear to god these these are all the same it's another, <laughs> it's we're another still edition. on that spaceship <laughs> It's like the, the, the Enterprise, I guess. Every episode of Star Trek start, starts with that shot. Yeah, whatever happened to Canada, guys? I know. <laughs> Look at this muscular kid, man. <laughs> it's hard to draw kids. <laughs> wow. Starting to see some of his hatching showing up. Start mm -hmm. experimenting with the hatching. Yeah, but, but Milgram didn't make the cut, man. He didn't get to come over to a homage... This may have been a, uh, a quick turnaround. See, not even like a Dutch angle or anything here. You could feel the Art Adams vibes in that body, that figure right there. We might even be able to figure out like where that con mm -hmm. that pose was swiped from. Yeah, and, the Art Adams very strong throughout these these early issues. And also the panel to panel transition, like it really almost looks like this girl turned into this. Guy. <laughs> Some more of those color hold things. I wonder if he had a model or something for this ship. Because mm -hmm. he's really getting miles out of that. Yeah. Yeah. They're, these and guys... it looks good. I like that. That panel is <clears throat> another good looking panel of the spaceship, but not the easiest thing to draw all the time. Yeah, no. There were a lot of old tricks. I remember Dave Cockrum talking about using hair dryers. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's starting to feel Jim Lee esque. Yeah. Yeah, this is definitely, this is like, uh, you know, Brett Booth. <laughs> <laughs> this is my favorite shit dude mm -hmm. some of these ads i always wonder about guys who you know like you start out in your first job some crappy book whatever doesn't sell and, and stuff do you think the enthusiasm is just it's just you're doing jobs like this is the got to be the worst nobody grows up wanting to draw alpha flight <laughs> right i don't know like just you know the excitement of like wow, like something I drew is going to be printed on paper, you know. They might be decent stories, too. Bill Mantlo, I feel like, was uh, had a pretty good run there at Marvel. So, And also, I know I'd be overwhelmed, you know, early on doing comics, so maybe you're not really thinking Alpha Flight. You're just thinking, get this page done. It's, I mean, it's a foot in the door. It's like, you know, t today Alpha Flight, tomorrow X-Men. And, this and feels very happens. Jim Lee-esque. Yeah, yeah, we're we're getting there, man. Like I'm, some I'm, of the shadows on the face here, I think, is stuff that you would see him continue to do throughout his career. It's fun to see the stuff that shows up where it's like, oh yeah, I recognize that for decades now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, yeah, even like this he, pose. He finds the pieces that so are gonna, gonna he's gonna keep. Yeah, the Ditko. That's funny. I always like when you see Jim Lee doing stuff that's uh, Out of not his part of his, right, not not part of his. Jim staple. Lee inking himself. If you take the color off of this. It would look like a Southern Knights comic or it something. It really would, man. This character especially looks like that uh, that generic quarter bin type. They're, they're Northern Knights. <laughs> <laughs> Milgram continuing to work with him here. We're getting way more pencil mileage now. Maybe caught up on deadlines. Draw more characters per page. 
yeah, a lot of glimpses of Jim Lee coming through in these in these pages. And like we're finally on Earth, so you, you get some fashion, some some like eighties fashion coming in. Drawn backgrounds. Yeah. <laughs> Feels like J John Byrne a little bit with Sasquatch. Maybe it's inevitable. Like yeah. it's probably made the biggest imprint for a character that doesn't look human exactly. I guess that's the source you would go yeah, to. Jim Valentino. <laughs> <laughs> Getting some big, some big moments. Yeah, this is quite a page. Slowly get into the place of putting something cool on every page. Yeah, start to start to get to draw Avengers and Fantastic Four. Feels like you're part of the Marvel universe now. <laughs> It's, what he, it's wow. what he was holding out for. Maybe yeah. his first Wolverine. Yeah, you might be right. Whole X-Men team standing. Yeah, I know. There. Stretch, right. blow, blow that up to a two-page spread and you're in business. <laughs> <laughs> Little Simonson di uh, dragon character. This has that quarter bin Southern Knights <laughs> Eternity Comics vibe too, man. That's a Jim Lee pose. Still too thick of a waist. Yeah, and, and we'd like to see it twisted. Yeah, yeah. Get that full. Uh, you got to get the T and A in there. Starting to do your cross hatching on the face. Warren Bernard represent. <laughs> <laughs> That's a Jim Lee face. And you see like the Barry Windsor Smith influence. That's an ambitious background right there. Yeah, you're just kind of trying everything when you're starting out, and like you haven't you haven't like narrowed down what your bag of tricks is yet. That's true, man. You got to see how that stuff looks in, looks in print. Some of these panels are really impressive. Like, this is a very natural panel, I think, with characters uh, interacting with the background. I feel like I've seen that panel in, like, a Jim Lee X-Men. I wonder if this passed a comic code, man. <laughs> 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 He's got a front tail. Wow. All right, man. Let's see if this guy is ready for uh, Punisher War Journal or what. That, that cover looks reference. like he's ready for it. Yeah. The, the Prince Purple Rain font. <laughs> and this is like uh, Salem's Lot, right? Like those little vampire kids right outside the window. Cool. Dude. Yeah, this looks good. Yeah. Mignola must be out there because now he's not mm -hmm. drawing feet anymore and he's just drawing those lines. That, that's a that's a Mignola stroke. All this stuff, actually. Yeah, I was thinking of like the Michael Jackson thriller video. Yeah. Another, uh, another influence here. Wow. This is strong stuff. It feels like he's leveled up on this sequence. Yeah, like, you know, we just looked at, in very compressed time, we looked at, you know, seven months worth of artistic growth. And you know the big jumps happen in, your, in the early part of your career. Also, uh, great to do organic stuff. Mm -hmm. You don't have to set up your perspective grid for this mound of, uh, this two-page spread. Right. The, the colors are working in its favor, too. And and I think, like, being forced to draw, like, a purple guy throughout it kind of, like, adds adds a little thing to the palette that you wouldn't see otherwise. Yeah, I think all of this stuff looks pretty good. Playing around with panel borders a little bit. Get more lines on the face. <laughs> Kids love those lines. <laughs> and you think, like, yeah, he's had a chance to... There, uh, Enough months have passed that he's had a chance to see some of this stuff in print. So it's like, okay, that worked, that didn't. I always think, yeah, I always think that's got to make a difference. Especially at this time in the production, you know, the way things were done then. And thinking of Jim Lee as being this like studious type creator, like I'm sure he got the printed issues and was looking at like, okay, more of this and this doesn't work. And I think he got these issues back and was like, never have domestic scenes. I need a fight <clears throat> on every page. It's it's kind of funny watching him draw storytelling pages like this. You just don't see that in any of the work that he's like most known for. It's very true. Like normal person clothes. It's it's been uh, a couple decades since we've seen well, that. You think about the incentives that are set up. You're just you're just not rewarded for drawing those kind of scenes. In any, if anything, you're punished. That's very true. And those image guys know that stuff too. Like you read those McFarlane interviews, and like he was very conscious about making stylistic changes to chase bigger sales numbers. And I'm sure Jim Lee very analytical as well, thinking the same way. Another muscular kid, young brute. <laughs> You learn how to draw comics the Marvel way, and they don't really have like a good like how to draw kids section. Right. His figure work's really coming along. You know, like seeing the figure thrown around and in different, uh, you know, very different poses and stuff. 
looks good. Yeah, this kind of thing is is totally showing off too, man. Like another thing that you want to do. Yeah, you get real proud of yourself whenever you could start to like twist a figure in into this this angle and shit, man. Whenever I want to impress somebody, like I'll draw a figure like that, like just you know sitting around doodling, but they're just like. Why not a front-on shot of Spider-Man or something? It's like, well, this is harder. Yeah, I'm thoroughly impressed by this issue. Yeah, yeah, I like this panel. A lot of Mignola stuff in here. It's funny to see this early stuff, too, and think of, like, what direction could he go? Like, imagine he gets, uh, somebody at Vertigo gets hold of him and stuff, and I realize everyone at home, Vertigo is not a thing at this year, but <laughs> there were horror comics. Like, I think of some of uh, Toddlebin and Bissett's work on Swamp Thing on some of these pages. Like, imagine he goes that direction, you know? Like, totally. That that's, would work perfectly for going in a more horror direction, and I assume editors that are looking would see this issue and think, yeah, we could do a horror story with this guy. Yeah, you're right. It's still not locked into that kind of plastic style that he's he's known for yeah the action figures yeah there it is man look at seven months of super early raw jim lee artwork uh, this kind of thing is always fun for me because we know who the artist is we know who they've grown into being and what the work look like at sort of their their apex seeing those early stages of struggle and discovery excites me to get back to the drawing board and get busy. I always think of this stuff, too, as, uh, you know, through the wrestling lens that we often talk about, and I feel like you bring out Milgram on because you've got some young young guy who's shown some promise, so bring in the veteran, see what you can pull out of this guy, you know, help him along a little bit, give him give him some... Uh, a push. Some tips. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Man, 1988. Uh, I'm good to go if you guys are. K Fabers, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel at the bell. We'll notify you new vids are available. Tom, what do you have out there? Uh, Jack Kirby, The Epic Life of the King of Comics. It's uh, the life story of Jack Kirby in comic book form. Uh, I got a Fantastic Four Grand Design, and you can check out my Patreon at patreon.com. Just search Tom Scholey. Jimmy. Join me on patreon.com slash jimrug, where you can download my hard-to-find out-of-print zines and mini-comics. You can see lots of my original art and how I make the comics I make, including Street Angel, Deadliest Girl Alive, that you can pick up wherever you buy comics or books, patreon.com slash jimrug. Red Room Comics are in the wild. Scoop yours up today. They are going quickly. Uh, get it put on your pull list. You can pre-order or, or order the comics at uh, my link tree in the description below this video. It'll take you to the Fantagraphics website. If you want to read the comics ahead of time, hit up my Patreon, patreon.com slash edpiscor. And I have over 100 pages up there right now. New pages every Tuesday. Three bucks get you the entire archive. Join the Cartoonist Kayfabe email newsletter at the links below this video. You can also find Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts and merchandise at the links below this video. All right, Jimmy, give them one less set of marching orders, man. We're going to be on our way. Read more comics.